Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to sunny Alpharetta, Georgia. My name is Tom F. Battinger, and today I'm joined here for this SPL Summer Finals presented by Curse Voice by DM Brandon and Aroar the Chunk. How are you guys doing today? Hey, Chunky. How you doing? Good. Shout out to the Chunks. <laughs> the Chunks are coming back, right? Yep. Challenger Cup. Ah, I'm very, excited. very excited. So, I mean, you guys at this point should be a little bit familiar with DM Brandon, maybe even myself. But, Aurora, why don't you tell everybody at home just who you are and what you do? Hey, guys, I'm Aurora. Um, I was formerly the support for Eager, and now I'm the team captain for my new team called the Fat Chunks, and we'll be competing in the Challenger Cup coming up next split. So, who's on the team? It's me, Kevin Bacon. Uh, just Gary D and Kabam. Kabam, excellent. Yeah. Kabam actually, and uh, while it's not the most accurate stat of all time, has the highest KDA from the last split. Wow! Shout out to Kabam. <laughs> no, Kabam is definitely a, a very good player in his own right. But I'm happy to have you here alongside of us, uh, so we get to have a little bit of that pro insight. You know, you've played in the SPL, you've played at Lands. We saw you play at uh, the NA Regionals last year, so yeah. you know a little bit how these players are feeling. This is for a lot of money, but I mean, it's also about just prestige, right? So yeah. to talk about how these players are feeling and what they're thinking going into these games. Yeah, the players are really excited. I talked to a bunch of them. Uh, they're also excited to watch the games. These games today are going to be great. The yeah. second round and this round, Cloud9 versus Par Paradigm is going to be really good. Yeah, I mean, Brandon and I were talking, and this is, I mean, we've done a lot of lands together. Yeah. We've done a lot of lands separately. You even more so than I, and I think this is up there. It's, it's really up there with just the amount of competition well, we've got. Did you hear Kevin's stat? Every single one of these teams has won a land. Wow. Every single one. <laughs> we went through the list. Every single one of them has a prestigious win on their on their belt, right? Mm -hmm. And they're looking to add the big one here because this is the first time that I think we've had this level of competition in a spot that didn't determine worlds. I, I, I definitely agree. I mean, we've, we've come a long way. Uh, it's definitely not easy to pick. I know you guys have your your su summer ticket, your season ticket out there, and you guys are trying to figure out. Yep. We, uh, if you guys are unfamiliar, it's just two. You know, We only allow you to pick two. Those are the guys that are going to finals, and well, good luck with all these guys. We've got three teams from North America, three teams from Europe lined up. You're taking a look at Cloud9 and Paradigm on the stage right now. That's the match that we're going to bring you in just a couple of minutes. And uh, If you're just joining us, if you didn't catch the, uh, the pregame show, there's a little switch. Omega, not in the solo lane scene. Yeah, uh, Barracuda decided... Uh, against all advice from DM Brandon to go eat fast food last night, and he's uh, he's paying the price today. Unfortunately, Barracuda is not feeling uh, anywhere near the weather, very much under the weather, uh, and as a result, will not be able to play the ADC role today for Cloud9. Omega will be swapping over, uh, and they're going to be giving that solo lane to Mr. Mackey. Which should be strong. I mean, Aurora, we've seen Mr. Mackey play in the SPL in the solo lane. Uh, how do you think this is going to work out for Cloud9? Yeah, I think it's a, the right move. Mr. Mackey's definitely a better soul laner than a hunter player, so yeah. it was smart by them to do that for sure. He's also really good in ranked. He's played a lot of ranked. He's high up there. He plays solo all the time in ranked, and he just performs well, so Does it's going to be exciting. Um, I play support. <laughs> Now, one of the cool things, I don't know if you guys mentioned it or not, but Omega actually, this isn't his first rodeo in yeah. the Hunter role. Yeah. Uh, he's played Hunter a little bit before, back when he was on, I believe, Snipe. Yeah, I think like right towards the beginning of the Snipe era, he was playing that role, actually had Stealth as his support. Mm -hmm. But he still plays Hunters like almost every day. He's a big Joust player, right. loves the 1v1, so it's possible that we're going to see Funball be kind of put on his heels a bit here. You know what's exciting to me? Funball is a player that really enjoys Kronos, and Kronos is a Joust monster. Oh, so this is a matchup. If we do get to see the Kronos, this isn't going to be foreign to Omega. This is something that he's sure. played against, uh, and that's usually uh, where Funball gets that. He, he likes to surprise him playing Kronos. Omega's going to be very ready for that matchup if it should come out. So. so the thing that I'm actually most excited about is actually having a roar here. <laughs> um, I'm sure a, a lot of you have at some point seen my stream I am not the easiest guy to, I guess, please. <laughs> very angry. Very few people impress me in Smite. Aurora beat me so badly with Fenrir support <laughs> when I thought he was trolling. Yep. I think I think he is a god. The, everything that he says today is straight up a fact. This guy has one of the brightest minds in Smite, and I think this is a, a, truly a blessing for everyone who gets to watch because his analysis is going to be awesome. And if it's not, well, then you, well, you don't have to pay attention. Just to blame it. DM Brandon if it's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> so it. we're going to go ahead and get into our first match of the day. Wait, wait, wait. What's this? This is the P's and Elgin, B's? Oh, the P's and, P's and B's, B's. Pretty please on Twitch TV. Paradigm versus <laughs> Cloud9. Can you, can you not? No. <laughs> I, got, a, I got bars. That was a bit too much for me. <laughs> 
<laughs> Too much for me, but we're in the P's and B's, pretty please. Paradigm is going to opt for, looks like first pick. Now, this is actually yeah. very interesting. Both of these teams are the only two teams in the league that enjoy first pick. So it's very cool to see how they go head-to-head, -head, and they're going to be the ones that are being played first. And Paradigm gets the first pick, and their ban will be Giannis. Uh, you can see uh, pick rate, 39%, ban rate, 32%. So he's getting about a little over two-thirds playtime. I think Paradigm really likes the first pick side because of the side. Uh, Got it. Uh, real quick, sorry about that. Uh, Ratatosker has been banned here, or Ratatosk, depending on uh, <laughs> where you live in the world. I currently live in Georgia, so it's there's an R. So, so as you were saying, <laughs> Aurora, yeah, yeah. Uh, Paradigm likes first pick because? Because of the side they get to choose. Like, if you get second pick, you're on a different side than you are for first pick, so... Mm -hmm you could really base your entire game plan around that. So that's probably why they like the first pick side as well. Just not for the pick ban, also for in-game. Oh, there he is. Right away, we're going to see one of the newer gods on the rosters. Opwatch being picked up second by Cloud9 alongside Thor. Now, this is a very potent god. He's really just tons of damage. And this character, to me, I've been wondering for so long why Stealth hasn't been bringing this character out because it fits his MO perfectly. I could do a bunch of damage while not actually having to do anything. <laughs> I could throw things all over the map and just run around in circles and be hilarious. And that's what Stealth does so well. Now the Freya pickup. This yes. is not a surprise to me at all for Paradigm. Both Funball and Cuvo absolutely love this character. And with the recent changes to the game in the meta, Freya, a late game god, something right. that is a shoe in right there. So what's great about the flex pick here is Freya plays two roles and Bologna plays four. Right? <laughs> so this is going to give them enough flex picked opportunity. And not to mention Ymir, Ymir technically plays three as well. Although the solo lane's not great. Still has two great roles. That is a 100% flex pick compared to Cloud9 right now who is just Thor is going to the jungle, Apollo is going to be your hunter, and Opwash is going to be your mid. They're going the complete opposite route. So there's two different strategies being employed here as we go back into the ban phase. That's actually very interesting. I, I like to see the opposite sides. You know, back a couple of weeks ago, Neath was a high priority pick because of the ambiguity. How valuable, Aurora, is the ambiguity? And we don't really know where Bologna, Ymir, and Freya are going to go, with, whereas Cloud9, as Brandon said, we know exactly where everybody's going to go. How valuable is that? Yeah, flex picks are awesome because you could pretty much throw a team in off and confuse them completely. Mm -hmm. This Ymir could be solo, it could be jungle, Bologna could be solo, jungle. Even Hunter, we saw that in Europe, so Very yeah, true. It, Paradigm could play it as Hunter as well. So they're going to come right back out of the gate with Athena. Hades is oh. going to be locked in in response lightning fast. Very, very quick. And this is interesting. Paradigm is a, Paradigm is a team that I haven't really seen much Hades out of. When, we, when I think of Zelia, I usually think of, well, everything except for Hades. Yeah. Uh, and, and Hades really winds up being a solo lane. And there you go. Production has trolled us. It is Osiris. Uh, and that... Well, again, the flex pick. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Osiris most likely, though, going to be your solo lane. Bologna right. likely to go to the jungle here. Freya probably going to be your hunter. And there's the Isis pick. I think everyone at home predicted this as well, with Agni being banned away by Cloud9. This was the obvious go-to. Final pick for Cloud9, most likely going to be your solo laner here. And they're looking to match up against Osiris. It's very interesting to see how the bans worked out for Cloud9. They ban out two Assassins and then the Agni. So are the Assassins, I, I, it's interesting. Assassins are usually find the jungle home. But I think for Paradigm, Assassins are more Zelia's play style than yeah. Cubo Fred. So a little, a little nod yeah. to Zelia and then the Agni. And Cloud9 is going to finish their round out with Fenrir. So as we take a look at the completed compositions for Cloud9, we've got a dual lane consisting of Apollo Athena, Apwash Thor, and what's likely to be a solo lane Fenrir. So, uh, like I said, the first time I ever met Aurora was Fenrir. I think this character plays almost every role in the game, and I think he does it br just masterfully. Uh, bringing Fenrir against probably Osiris here, Aurora, what are you thinking? The lane matchup isn't going to be good for him, but he's going to be able to rotate to the mid fights and really affect those really well. I really like Fenrir here. It's really, really good. It's going to be able to pick up Ymir as well. Unchained damage is massive, not to mention reducing the cooldown by half when he lands it and making it a huge stun, mm -hmm. right? He gets those runes off. Jumping into the back line, you're going to find Freya and Isis are going to be pretty close together. Remember, both of those damages are very linear, talking about both Pulse and Wing Gust, which means they're going to have to be trying to aim to the maximum distance as possible, putting them pretty much on the same part of the map. This gives Fenrir a great opportunity to rush them down, and considering Isis doesn't have any inherent CC immunity in her kit, this will allow Fenrir to force out things like beads very early in the fights, giving Opwash the perfect opportunity for counter-initiate with what is 
arguably the most frustrating move ever put into the game. Empty the crypts. I want to give a couple of points on the other side to Paradigm. I think the Bologna first pick is absolutely brilliant. Not only just because Bologna is who she is, she's a very strong character, but Paradigm wanted to go with two strong basic attackers, Freya and Osiris. Picking Bologna first eliminates her off the board from the competition right. and ensures that Freya and Osiris will be able to deal their damage because they're mostly basic attack oriented. Speaking of which, if we have three characters that are looking at basic attacks, items like Mid Guardian Mail, oh, Frostbound yeah. Hammer, and Witchblade are huge pickups in this matchup, but remember, there is a very small bug with Witchblade and Frostbound Hammer. If you apply Frostbound Hammer while the Witchblade is active, it will overwrite the buff, or the, rather the debuff, actually increasing their attack speed by 5%, so I don't wow. want to see both. I just want to see one. Now that you're talking. That you're sitting here talking about later game builds. Why don't we take a look at the early game builds right away? Lobster is going to be starting off in the mid lane as Isis, who's strong already in the early game with a purple pot. You know, Aurora, you look very excited. What are you? What are you thinking with this build? Yeah, they're looking to get pressure in mid because uh, Cloud Nine's solo and jungle are really, really strong. The Fenrir Thor combo is going to get pressure easily. They also have the Paul in the dual lane, so. Cloud9 is probably going to be able to take pressure. They do have Ymir on the other side, so we could see Paradigm get the pressure. But Isis wants to make sure she has that pressure in mid so they could get to the mid camps and secure him. Oh, we're starting at mid camps. Yeah, look at this. Fun Ball and Trick Tank are going to rush it, and they're going to get it on the bottom side. Ooh. There's a very weird start coming out. If we could take a look at the bottom right, you're going to see both the back camps and the speed buff have been taken, and Lobster will go to lane alone. So I guess Lobster's not going to be picking up the red buff, but he'll have that purple pot online to sort of boost what he what he can do in the early game. As we said, Isis already strong. Cloud9 on the other hand, they're going to pick up the mids on the right-hand side. So mids split down the middle in the beginning of the game. And then we're going to see Funball take back to the jungle to go for the purple. Red buff still available as well. Right side jungle has been completely cleared on the bottom. Speed buff, however, is still available. Usually the highest priority target in the beginning of the game. Yeah, Trix is actually playing Bologna support. Ymir's in the jungle, so we'll see how that works. It's crazy. That is that is very, very interesting. It's not the first time we've seen it, but it's a very aggressive support, and not for nothing, this definitely fits Trix Tank's style. When Trix Tank was at his best was during the Warrior meta. We got to see a lot of Sun Wukong. Plays great Guardians, but back to his roots, playing a Warrior. Yeah, Trix plays Warriors fantastically. One thing that Cloud9 does have, bringing Mr. Makey in, is he plays a lot of Bologna support in rank, so ah. his experience might help Cloud9 play against it better in the duo lane. I'm actually really excited that I said Bologna plays four roles and not three. <laughs> Because she actually got it right. Tricks would have made me look dumb. Uh, <laughs> Zalia getting pressured out here. Mackie really doesn't have the same level of control. And I like the builds here. It, you take a look at Zalia right now. Just having that death toll for that sustainability is going right. to allow him to shut Mackie down completely. And once again, shoved under the tower. Yeah, a large part of that, Brandon, is the death toll has to do with the attack speed or the, the attack chain of Osiris. He gets right. a lot of smaller attacks in. And although there's smaller damage, it doesn't change the amount of mana and health return. Not to mention their AoE on the second and third hits, giving him 15 health, or rather 18 health back per hit, which is pretty crazy. So he's gaining 32 health back in the matter of at this point, 1.4 seconds. Wow. Kimo Fred lurking in the jungle. He's looking like he wants to make something happen. Now, It's it, this is such a, ba a balancing act right here because you want to wait for the perfect opportunity, but if you wait a little too long, you're just giving up farm. Look at this. And it's there. Could be in No, okay. Cubo <laughs> Fred was smart to just go in there. Andy, even smarter, though, to stay at the tower. He had two spells worth of mana left, and had he gone in there, it would have been a death. Athena in a little bit of trouble. That's going to slow her down, but the dash gets her out there safe. No problem. Jeff is going to be on the safe side of things. Now, it's very interesting. Sprint is on cooldown. Uh, we talked a lot about the Bologna start, but Athena starting with the sprint. What are we going to see that turn into, Aurora? It's definitely going to turn into a heavenly agility. I... I would be surprised if he I wouldn't be surprised if he also picked up a blink. He would have two movement actives, but the blink on Athena right now is insane. You get awesome pick potential and you could be super aggressive with it. But Jeff might opt to go something else, like maybe like a shell because of the Freya damage and the right. Isis alt. So we'll see we'll have to see. This might actually also be one of the first times that we'll see Enfeebling Curse used in a competitive mm -hmm. uh, setting, considering the fact that they have three people relying very heavily on movement speed and auto attacks. It is a direct counter to this comp. Yeah, you mentioned a lot with the raw items. You mentioned uh, Mid-Guardian Mail, you mentioned Frostbound, and you mentioned 
the Witchblade. Wi- the Witchblade. Yes. But what Enfeebling Curse does, it's 40% attack speed, if I'm not mistaken, uh, which is a large, large amount. So we see mid camps taken and fought over. Jeff Hinland's going to get the taunt in. This Freeze by Ymir will be very, very good. And the Circle of Protection is strong. Kimo Fred not able to provide enough damage. But down comes Thor. Kimo Fred in a lot of trouble. The hammer's great. Jeff Hinland gets the first blood right there for his team Cloud9. But look at this. Andy's getting very low. Zalia not going to be able to find it. The sun goes off. Jeff Hinla finds tricks. They're going for Lobster. Silent's going to deter it, but all five members of C9 are grouped up. They find the first two kills with Omega coming in late to the party here. Fumball joins the fray, but the damage already done. That's one of the hugest things about Apollo in that in that duo lane. Wait, Able wait to second. just transfer from long lane Can, can we look at the graphs here? Sure. Why is the gold even? They just got first blood and another kill, and somehow Paradigm has managed to keep themselves... Not only afloat, but the experience difference is nineteen hundred ahead. Yeah, it's just a matter of just a matter of proper farm. Funball did make his way he's over level to middle. Eight. He did make his way over to middle, but he's gonna stay here right back to the dual lane. The reason why the gold's close is because Paradigm has a lot of pressure in these lanes and they've been pushing the waves in. Right now you can see too is Funball is freezing the wave and they're uh -huh. losing a ton of XP. Right, but I, I mean like Lobster was is level eight, stealth is still six. Yeah, that's insane. It's because the red, the purple pot start that Isis had. Uh -huh. That's yeah, that pushing start, him into the tower. Yeah. yeah, the start in the jungle, allowing him to rotate the way they started back camps and speed buffs. This might be the birth of the new meta here. It that's so strong on the Isis. I mean, Isis already has the early game push. This is like supercharging a race car. You're already strong in the early game, and you're just going to make it stronger with that purple pot. So, very very interesting start coming out from Paradigm, and it's working out for them. I am unbelievably impressed. I actually thought Spectator was glitched. <laughs> I, I, I froze for a second when we were watching Fumball freeze the lane. I honestly thought that there was a bug in the Spectator client. There's, it, It's an insane amount of experience and gold that they had ahead. And even dropping two kills. Look at this. They're still 500 ahead? Yeah. Well, we have to we have to watch these mid-fights. Oh, Athena Alton. Okay. Oh, no. It's going to be a lot of damage on Defender. He's all alone. And there's three members of Cloud9 by him. Double tap will miss. Couple of basics. They're going to go underneath the tower. Jeff decides against it. Zelia will be safe and sound underneath his solo lane. That's a big oh. commit. And because of it, Paradigm's going to look at gold. Paradigm will take the gold fury indeed. Uh, at six minutes, it's 160 gold per person. If we could take a look at the graphs, you'll see it spike right back up. Paradigm's playing really well right now in the lane and the objectives. But they got to start winning team fights now if they want to actually take this game. Because Cloud9 is still definitely in this. They're, they took the one fight at mid already, and we just have to see if Paradigm could fight back in these mid fights. It's so funny. We talk a lot about how the game is different online versus LAN. And Smite recently has been a very late game. We keep talking about Freya's and Nemesai and, and all this stuff. Don't do that. I like it. Don't I knew that. you were going to comment ah, on it. Nemesis, nemesis is. But <laughs> in any event, six minute Gold Fury. Aurora's talking about team fight potential. This is not the late game farm fest that we were expecting, and I am very excited. You know, it's crazy. With the way they did the Gold Fury, there wasn't even enough time for MLC to set up the full combo necessary right. to get the damage off to compete <laughs> against the Circle of Protection there. It was just a beautiful play. The call was perfect. It was, it, was, it was the quickness that really impressed me, Brandon. As soon as Athena traveled over there, if you looked at the minimap, you see the intelligence paradigm go for gold. Hey, anything that says don't go to solo lane, I'm happy with. <laughs> all right? Like, that's a good thing for me and all of my fellow, fellow if, if, solo brethren. If you guys are unfamiliar, Brandon plays solo lane in his casual games. <laughs> it's very annoying when people rotate <laughs> to solo and no one takes the gold. What? A lot of afro. Come on, man. What is it, 32 really deaths in our show, man? <laughs> <laughs> 20, 25? We're riding alongside right. Omega right here. If you guys are just joining us, uh, we're seven and a half minutes into this contest and Omega is actually filling in for Barracuda, who is sick. Mr. Mackie, the coach and the sub, will be taking over the solo lane. Now, one of the interesting things here, guys, is can't happen mid-game, but should Barracuda feel better later on, in between games, we can see the return of the Blue Hair Hunter. So, he might be coming back, he might not. It's all about how his stomach's going to be feeling. For the way that he's playing right now, I, I don't think that there's any rush. Omega Agreed. really filling those shoes well, and against Fumball, nonetheless. Like, very, very impressive. Yeah, one of the cool things that I noticed was the intelligence in the rotation to that mid-fight. As an Apollo level 5, level 6, you don't necessarily want to leave lane that early, but commits to it, does it very, very well. Oh, speaking of committing, Trick's Tank a little bit out of position. Beautiful use of the shield bash dash right there mm -hmm. just to avoid the, the damage from the Mjolnir's attunement. And what's impressive about that is that's a win. 
right there for Trix because two spells were used by Andy, only one spell from Trix tank. And if you offset the fact that Bumba's Mask is going to give him some of that mana back, it's still going to widen and be a. Oh, what is this? Mr. Mackey in a little bit of trouble. No, uses the can... ult and smartly waits for his help from oh, hey, well, everyone. Andy seals the deal. That's four Cloud Nine members on the right side. And because of it, Lobster and Trix want nothing to do with it. Dude, I, I respect that call right there. Not only does he get picked up, right? That's a Ragnarok used. Mm -hmm. Then immediately, defense. Defender of Olympus comes down, that's two ults. Anvil of Dawn comes out of nowhere for the third ult, and then just in case you see the corpse explosion. Two ult, or th I'm sorry, three ults, four players, and the rotation was instant. I liked the small mechanic there. We saw Mr. Mackey immediately go into the ultimate, but didn't bite right away because Ymir, while he's channeling shards of ice, he's CC immune, so right. it would have just immediately deleted the ultimate. Plus, Benver in his ultimate takes less damage. He does gain protection. If he has five runes. Well, it, then it doubles. Yeah. yeah. Then it doubles. Then he gains even more protections, which is crazy. A lot. So yeah. if, you, if you guys are questioning, you know, if you're not familiar with who Mr. Mackey is or whatnot, that right there, th those are the small things that you do that makes you an SPL player. And you, you know, what's funny is Mackey kind of came onto this, this roster like out of nowhere. You know, talking to Cloud9, you know, they were like, yeah, we picked him up. It seemed like a good idea, but... I was talking to them yesterday. They're mm -hmm. like, Mackie puts in an insane amount of work. Oh, yeah. His insight is incredible. And so far, going even with MVP candidate <laughs> Uzalea, like, that's impressive stuff, man. Definitely not, a, not, not something to look at lightly as we see a grouping in the, in the mid lane. Looking at the mid camps, looks like those will go to Cloud9. Trick Tank coming around the bend, wants to make something happen. Spirit Ball through the wall, but Trick Tank all alone. It's going to get taunted into the damage, but not enough. Oh. Trick Tank going to walk out short, but Andy's in the air. We got a teleport from Mackie. He's in the mid lane. As well, Trix is going to get turned on. Oh, beautiful silent stun. Another ult wasted. Cloud9 will be forced back, and Paradigm continues to pressure their lead. And all the while, look at Zalia. That's, a, that's 500 gold right there. Bang, right there. That's going to be our first rubble. That's oh, the wait, first tower no. to go down. Mr. Mackey is on his heels. Damage in the middle lane. Empty the crypts. MLC stealth. He's in a crypt by himself. Meanwhile, Andy picks up a lobster. Two on two in the mid lane that still. Wall. Looking for more damage. Bologna still giving protections with the ult. The whoop, the uh -oh. damage, and down goes Jeff Hindler. Wait, Omega's going to come in here. Low uh -oh. mana. He'll have enough for two spells here. Maybe. No, I don't think he can dash. Omega completely caught. He is overcommitted, and Fumball will find a double. Their lead was already huge, and now they're giving a ton of experience and gold to the players. They don't want to see it on Freya. Hyper carry. Scary stuff for Freya, am I right? Yeah, Lobster played amazing that fight. He silenced Thor's Berserker Barrage, oh. and he set up stuff with his Spirit Balls perfectly. And he also had a really good all on MLC with the Ymir all combo. You know, that's what we like to see out of Isis. We look at these mid laners providing damage, but uh, Isis is just so control-oriented, able to use the Spirit Ball and the Silence disjointed, not necessarily part of a combo, is so, so strong. And Lobster proving and showing that he's one of the yeah, longer standing CC mid laners. On demand. Yep. So with that huge win in the team fight, they're going to find a tower as well. Clumsy's going to take us back to the graphs here, and we're going to see just how big the lead is. Wow, 7,500 experience, 3,000 gold as well. Now Funball caught in a little bit of problems. He's wow. going to whoop the support. Might be good enough. We'll take a look. He turns around. Athena going to ult. This is all for the damage, but immediately goes into Valkyrie's discretion. And Funball, no ultimate, but safe and sound. That is a brand new Funball right there. Fumball is known as the panic player, the guy who gets out of position and just uses all of his abilities. He went right to the sky as soon as he was actually in danger. Being patient early on is very impressive. So what we saw there is Fumball probably would have went down, but it was unfortunate because MLC's one hit the wall, which mm -hmm. blocked it. So he couldn't combo the corpse explosion. So he was able to get out there easily. Really limited damage. And remember that one, that corpse toss, the corpse throw, 40% slow. There's no wow. scaling. It's just 40% 40. at all levels. <laughs> Omega's going to go ahead and pick up his purple. Likewise, will the Paradigm boys, and we'll make our way back into lane. Gold Fury being looked at, but it's really just the War of the Wards. Wards, by the way, uh, now offer gold when you clear them. So that's, that's right. very, very important. How much does that impact After, the Why don't you role? tell us more about the ward changes? Uh, I did that weeks ago. <laughs> 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 but Silver Roy, why don't you tell us a little bit how much of part of the support that is? Uh, warding is, you can only place two now, so it's more of a team thing than just a support, because everybody has to ward on your team to get map control. So mm -hmm. the thing with the wards and the gold, you're going to give them to your carries, because your carries <laughs> need the gold. So you're not really getting extra gold from the wards as a support. Beautiful timing right there, by the way, from Cubo Fred. 
perfect time on the respawn. They're going to get it with the bludgeon again. Andy off the mark here. Should be able to walk out of that damage. Empty the Crips has been used. And again, Omega's there. They'll find Cubo. Mackie still in the ultimate. Going to take Trick's Tank all the way to the back line. But he still has his ultimate right in place. Doesn't find the stun. Trick's Tank gets a whole bunch of people in the tether. That'll lower the damage. Trick's Tank, on the other hand, not any lower. Trick's Tank and Zelia both get themselves kills. MLC Stealth and Andy are the wrong side of those. So that fight will definitely go to Paradigm. One death for two. And that is not the three people you want up to try to contend this. Jeff has no damage, Omega has no mana, and Mackie's back in the base. They can't defend this whatsoever. That's going to be another huge swing in gold here. And it uh, looks like 13 minutes into a 230 gold swing per player. So we're looking at about 1,100 gold there. So in that team fight, Osiris got a three-man alt off, and that's why they were able to win. Yep. I don't think Cloud9 either didn't have vision on him or some, something the comms they didn't call him that he was coming from solo lane. If they saw him, they would have not all grouped on that one target and tried to burst him down. Osiris single-handedly won them that team fight. The Judgment Tether also doing a huge, huge deal. That's that blue that, that blue tether that you see coming out of Osiris. Oh. It lowers the damage so much. Mackie's going to rotate over to Duo, leaving his solo lane wide open here. Fumball and Lobster will retreat, almost getting the Tier 1 tower. They'll save that 500 gold, <laughs> which they need to. Already in a deficit of 5,000 right Right now, Cloud9 has a lot of ground to make up to be able to compete here. Jumping in his Bologna gets a good stun, but Trix is all by himself. Long range spirit ball just to sort of get Trix out of there. Looked like a slight miscommunication. Un unfortunately for Cloud9, it was a miscommunication by Bologna. She <laughs> not only doesn't get caught, but that cooldown will be up in like six seconds. <laughs> Very, very, very true. We look at Anister's face right now. Very, very focused. Andy has been looking at the back line with these ultimates, getting the stuns, and not always getting the follow-up that he wants. With that said, though, both teams, five and five. Kills are even. Mackie right now is three levels behind, however. Uh, every time he rotates, he hasn't always gotten a kill comparatively to Zelia, like we talked about. That three-man ult spelt a kill and an assist for him, plus he's been getting all kinds of solo farm. And it's on Osiris, a character who's not only insanely hard to kill, but who does a ridiculous amount of damage. Trouble in the mid lane for Lobster. Taunted into some damage from Thor. Circle of Protection is down, staying down. Good Gets spacing. a lot of damage on oh. that, and that'll heal him back up. In comes some help. Kivo. Not going to use the freeze. Ops to instead on the support. Jeff Hindla, half HP. Got him. Shards of Ice channeling. Dashed out. That's going to be a great escape, but is it good enough? Jeff channeling. Oh, not enough. Counter Zelly initiate. No, Andy missing the ult again. This is huge misplays every time. I don't understand. This is not the Anister that we're used to. Tricks tank going to be picked up in the mid lane as Mackie tries to burn something all the while. Funball chasing Anister. And again, Paradigm able to just expose every little mistake that Cloud9 makes. Yeah, they missed two big alts there, the Crips and the Thor alt just missed on all of them. The Crips hit them a little bit, but it wasn't enough to really turn the team fight. After Thor missed his alt, they probably should have looked for a disengage. What I really liked was their control of Jeff Hinla. Jeff yes. was in the front line the whole time. They like, we're going to put him in the in the shards of ice here. They're going to put the wall up. Now, Jeff, of course, does still have preemptive strike, which he uses to great effect. The issue is the only direction he could use it in was towards the enemy side of the map. There was no way for him to actually escape from the fight. He could only delay his what was inevitable demise. I loved... Nice reference. I loved the trust that Paradigm has on Freya, on Funball specifically. They had a team fight going in the mid lane, and Freya was on the left side of the map 1v2. They did not mind. They allowed Funball to play his game. Yeah, going back to Jeff, I, as a support player myself, playing Athena into Ymir jungle or support, it's just a nightmare for me. I just don't like it at all. Speaking of uh, supports, obviously you are one of the, in my, at least in my eyes, greatest supports that have ever touched the game. Thank you. There are no sovereignties on the side of Cloud9. Talk to me about that. Yeah, I think Jeff really likes the... Heartward Amulet. Heartward Amulet because the Freya is in the dual lane, so he has to build for that. And it also gives armor to his teammates. So Which is for good. tricks, yeah. So he wants to give it armor to... Omega for we do have shell trick. level one online as well, so that's yeah. sort of that'll provide those protections on demand. And as he levels that up, that'll just get stronger. Yeah, so he's going to be more in the back, heavenly his team, shelling his team. He doesn't have that blink to really engage, so he's just going to be looking to peel with his taunts and try to heavenly people out of things like Ymir slows. Which fits what we expect out of Jeff Hinla. Jeff really is the is the the Geb Sylvanas player, not the Ymir 
or Aries player, right? Mm -hmm. We expect these defensive type plays coming out of Jeff Hindla. Meanwhile, oh. defensive is all but what Trixag has in mind. He's going pure aggressive, jumps in, and that's going to force out the ultimate from uh, Puash. And with that, let's ride along with Paradigm and see what they're thinking in their comms. Just don't, just don't, I'll hold them all. I'll hold them all. That's fine, beats down, beats down, everything's down. Get out, four out, four out, four out, four out! Thunder's teleporting, I think, Thunder's teleporting, get out, get out, get out. Just engage, just engage. Just engage, just engage, too deep, too deep. Just engage, just engage. I'm pushing right now, I'm pushing right. I told that. Help him, help him though, help him a little bit. Help him. Get out, get out, get out, get out, get out. Don't get out. This thing is good. Good, 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 good. Push up, push up, push up. That's what I'm doing. I am. I am. This thing is good. This thing is good. This thing is good. Tower left. Tower pushing too. Just back out. Are they chasing or no? No. No. All right, guys, we're back. We just saw the team fight, and while Paradigm actually wound up putting themselves in a bad spot twice, you heard the communication. Get him out, get him out, get him out. Just making sure that he was able to save not only Cubo Fred, but allow Zalia to get all this damage off. Yeah, so so much so much in and out. I love to hear exactly what the players are saying when we sit in those listens is pow listen ins powered by Curse Voice. So cool to get the actual insight. Yeah, them saying disengage, disengage, get out, I'm fine, I'm fine, is all great stuff because they see Zalia over in the right lane taking a tier 2 tower, and if he's getting that, that's a win no matter what. They don't need any kills at all. Just there to waste time. We hear yeah. them go in, go out, sort of doing a dance, and that's all they need to do. They need to occupy time. They need to run the proverbial clock down so Zalia can do what he does on the right side of the map. Very, very cool to see how teams work and, and just you burn time for the enemy team. You know, there's two hyper carries uh, in this game right now between Freya and Apollo, and neither of which are going to be super, super relevant until they get all of their major core items online. C Apollo's probably going to need some crit before he really becomes super dangerous, but Freya, Demonic Grip, Fatalis, Boots, ready to go. She's looking to fight. Yeah, I mean, 302, that's the slash line reading for her, and I, we mentioned it, not the last team fight, but the one before. Freya is rolling, and once that happens, Aurora, it's hard to stop that train. Yeah, Freya's definitely uh -oh. rolling. Oh. Uh-oh. Aurora, you think he's getting out of this one? Uh, with the Fiendal, maybe. Oh, no, the Freya. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah. <laughs> Valkyrie's discretion going to stop oh, everything. But down comes Thor. Anderson's going to try and make That's things big. happen. MLC Stealth has shown up as well. The Crips are released, and nobody's in them. It's going to be a little bit of problems, but not for fun ball. Trick Tank burns the ultimate for the escape. But Cubo, here's the welcoming party. Shards oh, of Ice. Stealth. That's a lot of damage on a Stealth. One more shot. One Wait, more shot. Alive? Where is it? Jeff gets the kill on the Tricks, and that's a teleport from Mackie. That should help us team out in spades. I cannot believe that MLC Stealth is alive right now. They still managed to find Anister. Uh, well, not going to be right on the mark. Mackie going to be forced to beads there as he does take a lot of damage. And you see those pings coming out there calling for FG. You know, fantastic, fantastic attention to detail and objective mindedness coming out from these players here. We see how quickly Paradigm goes for, well, the stuff after the stuff. It's so important not just to win those team fights. It's so important not just to deal that damage, but to think about what you can gain from those. The team fight happens, the damage goes down, and immediately these veteran players go right to the gold field. Yeah, you gotta also keep in mind Cloud9 played that really well. Andy stunned the bludgeon out before MLC died, and that's why he was able to get out perfectly. And then Jeff taunted right after stun, and that's why he made it made it out. Fantastic play from Paradigm. 21 and a half minutes into this contest, folks. 10 to 6 read the kills, and this game has been all Paradigm. 10,000 gold on the side of the yellow and black team right here, and they are the ones, might not be the favorite coming into this one, but certainly showing Cloud9 how Europe the is ready to play. The, these, you know, not to be that guy, but whatever, these guys are the underdog. They are oh, the yeah. sixth seed coming into this tournament, absolutely. And, you know, as much as we want to point at Barracuda being missing as, like, the big key here, and, well, I, I don't know if Omega would have done all that much better than Mackie, the big thing is they got two kills to start this game on Cloud9, and Paradigm still was up gold and 2,000 experience at that point. When it comes down to it, their meta was just better. It's also great to see them playing this well, because last land, I think they let everybody down themselves, EU... Just Damn, smite esports right, in general. Yeah, Just let all of Europe down. <laughs> everybody I mean, thought they were going to do a lot better. That's why. It's very true. Yeah. Paradigm in the in the spring finals, they went 0 and 5, unable to win a game in not just the regular matches but also the consolation. Here, completely different team, and it's worth telling the story of the actual season. Paradigm started off very well. 
not that strong. Halfway through, they win a game. We bring Funball on for a post-game interview. And he says, look, we're going to win every game till the end of this season and we're going to land, which is what they needed to do. It was not going to happen. Here we are, weeks later. Paradigm is performing at land because, well, they won every single game wait, wait, wait. for the rest of the split. Did we set that net worth to show teams, or is that <laughs> actually what the net worth is between all players? That's the reality. Holy. Because there, there's a setting. We can click a button, right? And it will separate <laughs> them by team. And it looks like that's what we've done because our support is that I mean, 500 gold ahead of the carry. That's a big deal. It is definitely a large deal. Why don't we take a look at one of the comparisons we've got. We're taking a look at the KDAs of the mid laners. Now, MLC South, no slouch. Of course, his team won the his team won Worlds. That's Lobster right. has been the story of this game. He's looked so strong. And don't forget, you guys that are playing at home on alphadraft.com, your FP is right there. Th this, for me... This for me is, is is a big deal because this is what Lobster Ooh. was worth before going to this uh -oh. game, and he's going to be worth so much more. This is the player that I've always looked to as a person to help me guide my playstyle. Lobster, since 2012, has been one of the best players in Smite. He has never fallen off, even when he took like a six month break. Yep. He came back out of nowhere and won a tournament with his old team. <laughs> the dude is incredible, and right now, 114. Great support plays, has gotten out of two very sticky situations, and, and realistically shouldn't have. But now his team's going to... Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, they're caught. They're Fire caught here. Giant no, no, with no, no, no. all five players up. This, to say this is a risky move is the understatement of the split. Heavenly. And it's just a ruse. Paradigm is immediately going to relinquish the fight and look directly at the opponent. Fun balls in one direction. Trick Tank is in the other. Zelia's in a third. Lobster focused on the mid lane on Omega that's made the rotation. Oh, MLC stealth. stealth one shot away. Fun ball not able to do it. Trick's tank is two members in red underneath the tower. Paradigm oh doesn't God. care if there's a structure. They are diving. Jeff Hindler does get the kill on the lobster. He's going to make them pay. Mr. Mackey, very, very, very low. Beautiful play, though. He uses the Brutalize to get away from the almost stun coming out from the tether and then jumps over the freeze. Unfortunately, I don't know if it's going to be... Actually, no, this this is a successful wow. defense here. Jeff Hinlin moving back forward will ensure that he pushes everyone on the blue team out. You know, that kill onto Lobster, that kill onto Lobster was huge. Yeah, they they were able to defend that because they, they have Freya as their hunter, so they don't really have a lot of tower damage unless Osiris is hitting it. And he was, but they had no minions, so the armor wasn't reduced. So it was really hard for them to take that tier two down. You know, I actually, I was looking at the Osiris build, and I'm thinking, I haven't seen him build an item in a while. And then I realized that he sold his death toll and picked up chin size. Yes. Oh, man, that damage. Uh, so, I mean, chin size has used to be a staple of this character, and the, or all chainsaw characters, essentially. Characters yeah. with small basic attack chains. You see how quickly he attacks. Now, those, those basic attacks will deal damage based on his physical power, but they'll also now deal additional damage. Chin size is a flat, it's percent health of your opponent. That's right. So it doesn't matter how much power you build, how much any other stat, it's all about the percent of your opponent. So those quick, quick attacks, little power doesn't matter for this Osiris. He's going to be hurting like a truck. His final item here, you're going to see Silver Talisman picked up. More than likely finished into Bulwark. We already have a Heart Ward Amulet online, and it's very unlikely with the amount of healing they have on Cloud9 that he'll be looking for a Pestilence. Doesn't really seem to fit the build. But the, I think, what, 450 health right. on Bulwark, Mr. Yeah, you, support player? Uh, yeah, I believe so. It's pretty high. Yeah, it's and high. 60 defense. It's, it's a really and then the big passive swing. as well. So. Now, Bulwark is an item that's very, very strong. Oh, Hold here we that go. thought. Andy's in a little bit of trouble. Walled off is Jeff Hinla. No freeze available. On the backside is Zelia getting a little testy. No slow onto Jeff. He'll get out of there. Now, going back to what we were saying, Bulwark is an item that's it's good. It has very good stats, but we don't see it built all the time. It's expensive. Why, why don't you break yeah, it down? It's for expensive. Us, oh, we got another fight breaking out. Possibly? Yeah, look, yeah. Look at this. Zalia putting right all the damage onto Jeff Hindler. Shin size burning right through. He had nowhere to go. That wall was up for like a month. That was like the fifth Harry Potter book. It's all Trix Tank for me right there. The three man stun coming out absolutely just isolated the team. Really long book. <laughs> <laughs> really? That's your that's your long book. <laughs> Let's everybody show how uneducated <laughs> DM Brandon is. No war and peace. Harry Ooh, Potter. In the air. Come on, man. Thor's in the air. He's not going to go in. Uh, no, he has to play this defensively. And he's made a lot of aggressive, gold. aggressive decisions. Oh. Interesting. Okay, so they'll go for gold. I think they recognize the fact that they don't have much to do here. They don't want to be too aggressive. They're going to lose the Fire Giant, which is going to hurt them greatly. But they're going to try for the Gold Fury, which Cubo's not even going to let happen. Cubo, don't do it. <laughs> it's just, you don't need this. 
Cloud9 does get it. Cubo stuns out too. Mr. Mackey, Mackey, Mackey he might be the problem. No, he'll be out of there, no problem. Zelia going to turn around. Those crips hurting a lot. Cubo also walking the other way. But Paradigm now wait, sporting a new belt. Wait a second. Empty the crips was just used after they got Fire Giant? Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> There's one reason to pick this god, and so you can't do things. <laughs> now they can do things. Yeah. It's pretty funny there. I One of the things that is most annoying when you pick up Blink and you blink in like Kivo did there and Fender jumps and the stun hits you right as you blink in, it's like one of the most annoying feelings ever. <laughs> Kivo oh. Fred taking damage here. Mackie maybe overstating his usefulness here. Brutalize and Unchained down. Bees. He's going to use yeah his bees for cooldown, but not enough. Uh, with the Empty the Crips down and Mackie not having that frontline presence anymore, we're looking 100% at Jeff Hindler here to try to control this. Paradigm is knocking on the door. Yeah, we still got Ice Assault, too, so they could just Ice Assault this with the next minion wave, and it's going to be free Phoenix. Oh, look at this. Corpse Explosion down as oh, well. Oh, they're going Having in now. Agility. Just they're right away. For it. Don't even need anything. The shell's activated. <laughs> wow, okay. The Ice Assault <laughs> is down. Nobody's going to take any damage. This is a free Firebird. The first Phoenix falls here for Paradigm. So what, what we're going to see here, they're most likely going to take the Tier 2 and then back Clumsy. Please, gold in hand. Bring it up. We want to see just, yeah, look at this, almost 2,000 gold on most of the players, over 2,000 for some. They'll add 150 each year. They're going to go back, spend money, and they're going to look to close this one out. Yeah, they're going to grab the buffs as well. Yeah, they'll clear out the jungle. Now, what they're doing here is they're just going to elim eliminate all comeback potential yeah. for Cloud9. They're just stripping it. Sure. Buffs are nice for Paradigm, but it's more about the the offensive gesture to Cloud9. You're not going to be able to get gold safely here. We have something to do with it. And Paradigm looking so, so different than they did, not just earlier in the split, but at the Spring Land. So, MLC Stealth, you can see on the top of the player damage at 18,700 with a god. A lot of people don't see is super strong, really showing us otherwise. The big issue here is that the two players that made the roll swap, the sub and Omega from Solo, riding the bottom. <laughs> One of the things that I really liked here, Brandon, is, as production is pointing out to us, is the damage that ISIS has been doing, 8,000. That's not a lot. But the impact that ISIS has had on this game is so much more than that 8,300. Yeah, the outwash damage is a lot from Empty the Crypts. They've, he's been getting really good alts. Like, for instance, the Gold Fury one right. hit a ton of people, but it didn't really result into any kills at all because they were just trying to disengage. So that's where a lot of outwash's damage is coming from for sure. We're moving over on the right side of the map. They're grouping up. Fire Giant still available for a minute 17. Should be enough time for them to group up and really get that final... Or not, not, I'm sorry, not final. They only have one Phoenix down. Get that yep. second Phoenix down. Now, if they can, this will create a lot of pressure going into the next phase of Fire Giant fights. But they're looking at the Phoenix that's probably the least useful overall when trying to siege down the Fire Giant, considering its proximity to the actual cave. Yeah, the, the ability to just take this Phoenix as soon as you pick up the Fire Giant is, is really what makes this the quote-unquote easy Phoenix to go ahead and grab the left side being a little bit more difficult. They're but here's there. the engage. Osiris ult will miss, but it's going to provide the spacing. He's that's invincible. That's exactly what Paradigm is looking for. Push players out of our way. Allow us to get the Phoenix. We don't even want the fight. We're just looking for the objective. So right here we're going to see when Paradigm does, does decide to go for the left Phoenix, Cloud9 has to fight them because three Phoenixes pretty much is game over. We've uh, only unless seen you're like, Titan. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> but We've seen it once. Twice at the at the launch right. tournament, right? Uh, yeah. I think that was two Phoenixes. Oh, it was two? Okay. I think it was two Phoenixes. All right. Not 100%, you might be correct, but I remember Shang, he, uh, he bled the Titan uh -huh. and hitting a player, so the Cats switched off the Titan, they got wiped, Dare to Care, and Barracuda wow. with one of the most successful defenses in history. So a return to normalcy here, 31 and a half minutes into our first contest of the day. That's if right. you're just joining us, this is a best of five, ladies and gentlemen. Cloud9 without their star hunter, Barracuda, taking on Paradigm. A team that has swung up so strong in recent weeks. Paradigm looking very, very strong. Over 10,000 gold in the lead. Also kills doing them justice as well. So Paradigm without a doubt in, in the driver's seat. I really like the way that they've played every part of this. The early game, though, that's what really made me smile. Yeah. Another thing we could look at, too, when, we, when we're looking at the left Phoenix, when they eventually go, they're getting all the lanes pushed out right now. They have the Bologna all and the Isis all and they have a shell, so they have so much protections whenever they want to dive that Phoenix. 
So we see Ymir walling these minions. There's got to be a reason for that. Yeah, he's trying to stack the wave up. He's trying to get like a slow push going on. He wants two waves on top of each other so there's more fire minions to deal with for Cloud9. Because Cloud9 only has good wave clear out of Alpwash. So if they send Apollo, Fenrir, or Thor over there, it's going to take a while to wave clear for him. Which is really important considering the Fire Giant has respawned. They're already ready wow. to do it. They have no defensive measures set whatsoever, and there's no way anyone from Cloud9 is going to be able to make this defense. With this, Paradigm might be looking to close this one out. Cloud9 attempted, but they came in too little too late here. Jeff's going to show up, but now he's all by himself, surrounded by Fire Giant buffed Paradigm. So much damage coming out. Trick Tank going to jump over and actually miss the stun the and wall. the damage. Oh. Up in the air is Fun Ball. Mackie ha chased out half HP. Athena will come down, but lift in the air is Andy. No one has died just yet. Mackie will change that. Fun Ball the first to fall, Lobster despite too. the fact that he's got it. Lobster will fall. Cloud9 is winning this engagement, but Zelia's looking to turn it around. Zay MLC oh, stealth fall to the hand of O. Cyrus, this is trouble. Three members of C9 so low after looking so strong. This is In so much comes trouble. Cubo, gets the freeze, down falls Andy. Mr. Mackey, Jeff Hinla, and Omega, Boom. the only ones available, and Jeff hanging on by a thread. By the way, even though you saw the taunt go out in front, it did hit behind, stopping the bludgeon damage. This is going to allow Jeff to get out of there. A two for two trade. Zalia literally is at full health right now. That is not a euphemism. That is not <laughs> some kind of metaphor. He is 100 percent health on one of the tankiest characters in the game, one of the hardest hitting characters in the game, and he's looking to close this one out. And they'll be able to just chow right Ooh. through these phoenixes. Osiris very, very adept at killing them. Wait. Mr. Mackie and friends are going to try and mount a Good defense. Block, Zalia. Out comes the ultimate from Cuvo. There's a lot of damage going on to Zelia. He's about 25% HP. Still looking at the Firebird is Paradigm. Tanking it is Cuvo. Damage coming out. Jeff Hindler looking for a great taunt. Gets two. Mr. Mackie going to go into the ultimate. Grabs Got one. Him. Cuvo on Underneath the tower, and that will be curtains for the Frost Giant. And look at this. Mackie, super smart, jumps away, knowing that his team will be able to follow up, let the Phoenix do its work. They're going to pick up another kill. Zalia took way too much damage there from the Phoenix, wasn't able to hold it on for as long as he wanted to, and Cubo Fred winds up paying the price. Yeah, I think Zalia and Cubo thought they were like tanky monsters that could just tank the Phoenix like all day long, but they realized that they couldn't because they have Athena Taunt and they have all the CC. It it's very important when you're ahead to, to utilize that. You have to be able to go ahead and j take those team fights head on because you know you're ahead, but you have to play the lead. You can't let the lead you play you, and that's exactly what we saw right there. Yeah, you also have to play with your numbers. They only had three up. If they just backed and then waited, they would have had three with Fire Giant, and they could have pushed with five as a team, and it would have been a lot better. But I think they just got a little ahead of themselves, and... You know, They'll be able to regroup. For me, it comes down to the fact that they weren't properly trading the aggro of the Phoenix. Zalia wound up taking like 11 or 12 right. hits, yeah. which, remember, is additive damage. Does percentage-based damage higher and higher and higher as it goes on. And with that, you saw him lose like 60, 70% of his health. He had to reset it, and he wound up taking way too much. Paradigm bites off a little more than they can chew on the left side of the map, but they fall back and take the Gold Fury just keep putting this lead ahead and ahead. 14,000 gold on the side of Paradigm. And again, sure, Paradigm wants the gold. It's more about taking that opportunity away from Cloud9. All right, so we're 30, 36 minutes in here. Two members still have Fire Giant. Phoenix does respawn on right, successfully defended so far. It is weakened. Trix Tank and Zelia both do have increased damage, so you're looking at about... I would say if, if those two were to be fighting a raw Phoenix, it would have about 40% of its total normal health. They should be able to burn that down, but the rest of the team's going to need to be there. With Fumble back online and going to be relevant in this fight, it's going to be very hard for them to get to the back line again. Last time, it almost seemed like all the cards kind of fell into their lap. Mm -hmm. This time, they're going to have to hope for more of the same. Trix Tank getting very aggressive. This one's a little different. The Phoenix is going to be weakened, as Brandon said, so this one will be easier to seize than the one on the left-hand side, but still a problem. Cloud9 should really try to get the Isis all here. They should definitely try to defend it. Oh, fight's breaking out. Zalia is going right to the back line. Omega taking a lot of damage here. Trying to just get back into the fountain. He will, thanks to that Mesmerize. Trix Tank sticking to the Phoenix. Super smart play there. They're going to burn down the Firebird again. MLC Stealth getting low as Omega crashes back in. But this might be his undoing. He dances into the Shards of Ice. Wrong way, son. Goodbye. Fun That's going to be two. Fun ball, fun ball. Gets credit for the kill onto Omega. And he's turned They're onto the, the dog. Puts Mr. Mackey into the ground. And the Titan will fall. First First game of the set goes to Paradigm. 
Everyone expected Cloud9 to blow through the European underdogs here in a 3-0 fashion, but starting the day off, the summer finals, of course, powered by Cursed Voice, were powered by Paradigm. <laughs> Looked very, very strong. Again, I can't stress enough how much of a turnaround this team has made. Uh, previously, previously sponsored by Trig, now under their own brand, Paradigm. Very, very strong. They have something to prove to themselves, not just the people at home. Yeah. After what was a lackluster Spring Finals performance, and they have come out with a vengeance. So, a few things we should note. Winged Blade making a huge comeback in this game. One of my favorite items. Super overstated for its cost. Uh, Paradigm loving that, having great success with it. But the real story is, early meta was incredible. They get a huge lead. I personally, and I, again, I know this is crazy, I thought Spectator Client was glitched. <laughs> I thought it, I froze during my cast. I'm like, this can't be right. This does not make sense. That's how far ahead they were. Even after dropping two kills, Gold was even there ahead by 2,000 gold. Their map control was incredible. We got... Three gold furies by 21 minutes with a 10,000 gold lead against the world champions. Incredible stuff. I mean, you can't, you can't, you really can't make this up. And when, now talking about a, a little bit about how Barracuda not making it to here, I don't really know how much that impacted this game. It, Paradigm just looked strong on their own. It could impact their paycheck. <laughs> just might. We don't know if they'll make it past this one. So we'll take a look at just how they went. But Aurora. One of, your, one of your closing statements, how do you feel about this game one and how each team came out? It was a really good game. Paradigm's comp was really good. I like the Bologna Isis all together. They had the shell. They had the Ymir jungle, the CC guardian coming out of the jungle. So it was a great comp, great game. Very interesting. Shout out to Bologna. <laughs> I, I'm absolutely loving it. I love the level of competition that we have here going on. So we broke it down a little bit here, but we'll leave it the rest to the real analysts. Why don't we bring it to Kevin on the analyst desk. Bring it away, Adonis. Welcome to the Analyst Desk, powered by Curse Voice. Cloud9 with their sub, not able to win the first game. But hey, uh, Europe won a game this time. We Paradise game. won a game. Paradise ah! won. We got one. How can we be upset by that? I mean, yeah. In fairness, though, I'm looking at the, the game overall, Kevin, and I don't really see a way Cloud9 would have won that if Barrow was here. That's my opinion. Yeah. Just based on the composition that we saw um, Paradigm pull out, I don't think Cloud9 were ready for that. No, they, they weren't at all. And, you know, Omega... Well, he didn't have a lot of success on Apollo, the fact is he wasn't really a part of the early game. I don't think it mattered, right? Even if they had Barracuda, I don't think it would have been too different. I mean, Paradigm came mm -hmm. to play. Their composition right. was disgusting, honestly. It was full of protections, full of slows, full of control. I mean, they had Isis Alt, Bologna Alt, and Osiris passive. How can you kill that? Not just that, but every single one of those guys has a slow as well. Yes. And when you've got that much slows, I'm surprised we didn't see a wing blade come out from Cloud9 at all in that game. At least maybe we saw one towards the Jeff. end. No, Jeff, Jeff, Jeff was, was the only one, and there was one Heavenly on their team, but it just didn't but really like, see Osiris, constant slows. You've got Ymir, constant yes. slows. Freya, constant slows with Pulse. Then you've got Bologna with the Shield Bash, that's a slow as well. Multiple slows stacked up. Big front tanky t um, t front line as well caused a lot of issues for them. I mean, that's kind of North America in general, though. They don't really like building utility items too much until very late in the game. They like five and six lighting them. I've even I've even heard Cloud9 specifically a couple of players talk about it. Like, I don't understand EU builds. Why why did they build second item Winged Blade on Isis, right? And I mean, right there you can see why why you would. It delays your damage. But you, you stay alive for a while and you relieve the pressure on you. And pressure, really, that's what Paradigm had that entire game. The whole time through as well. Go back to picks and bans, though. And when we look at, actually, through the picks and bans, we saw Apollo pick for Omega. Now, obviously, Omega's stepping into the role as a substitute for Barracuda being sick at the moment. And then, obviously, Mr. Mackey going to the solo lane. But they picked Apollo into Freya, which isn't a common pick that you see nowadays. Freya has a great matchup against mm -hmm. Apollo, especially once we took the uh, magical protections off of the Mez. Oh, the Mez, yes. So that made Apollo's matchup, I guess, it even worse than it already was. Then on top of that, we saw um, Fenrir in the solo lane. Last pick. Last picked against an Osiris. And on top of that, not just against the Osiris in lane, which, meh, you know, it's, it's a meh pick. You're yeah. not going to die in that lane. But what's he going to focus on in team fights? He only had Lobster to really go after. It's almost like I feel that Cloud9 might have changed up their picks I agree. to suit the players more so than the strategy, which, which you do have to. I mean, that's not like a thing where they shouldn't do that. They almost had to do that. I mean, if Makey's coming in to, to, to fill in for a soul lane for a LAN, I mean, he's not, he didn't come to this LAN no. preparing to play. I mean, of he course. was probably watching games instead of playing games. Fenrir is obviously a comfort pick. I mean, he picked it into Isis while the matchup seems okay. You know, you can go in Spirit Ball and Silence is yeah, down, but, but I mean, there was so much CC to control Fenrir. That's right. And he really couldn't do anything. And Mickey didn't have a death for most of the game, but it's just... 
he I mean, wasn't. He, make, no to impact. be fair to Makey, Makey didn't make any mistakes. Oh, Mackie no. was fine. You call him Makey, it's Mackey. Mackie, Mackie, I did it again. It's like, he got Eric's going to Eric's going to yell at me. But yeah, Mackey overall throughout the game, I think he had a fantastic game. Got picked towards so. the end when he was like five v one, but that was, yeah, that was that was end game. But like throughout the late phases, he didn't make too many mistakes. They made a lot of commitment to this right hand side, though. Yeah, early on, I believe it was about six minutes in. Mm -hmm. You saw Jeff Hinla alt over onto right. onto Ma Mackey. Mm, that's Mackie, correct. Not Mackie. Mackie. Uh, and then Anister committed as well. And he also came in for that. But it, it just it didn't work out for them. And then we saw immediately all of Paradigm go for the Gold Fury. Funballer, I'm sure, made that call instantly. He's that's actually a player of the game as well as two. Player of the game. It makes sense for that as well. Funballer had a fantastic game. And the one thing you can tell with Funballer as well is that during the game, you'll hear him do shout-outs. He'll, he'll actually be loud and on comms. And when he gets excited and he's in the zone, Funballer is one of the loud boys of EU as well. He doesn't often do it, but when he's, when he's really in there and he's happy. He played fantastic in this game, especially when he got ganked early on as well. About halfway through, the, about seven minutes, eight minutes in the game. There yeah. was a four-man rotation for him. Yeah, he was, I, I believe, seven, one, and five at the end of the game. He played fantastic. He played out of his mind. And like you said, getting that energy flowing. You know, normally yep. we see that with uh, Fnatic is like, they're the, right. the ideal team for like the energy. Reels, mm -hmm. Maniac, they're screaming at the top of their lungs. Just when... You know, they secure a camp. They're like, yep. let's go! And it's just like yelling. Exactly. And, and we, we we're like two rooms away, right. and we hear Fun Baller screaming. I mean, he was into I the game. You, when I when I heard him, I was like, yo, he's in. I was like, is that, is that? Oh, man. Fun Baller's in, in for this game. That's what happens when he goes off. And I think the boys have... Honestly, Paradigm's composition and how they played that out today was what they would have done against Cloud9 if Barrow was here. They didn't change anything. No, and nothing the at all. The strategy didn't change whatsoever. I think maybe game two it will change now that they've had a feel out for how Mackie's playing and how Omega is in the Hunter role. And maybe they'll switch things up a little bit if they need to. But I think if they just run to repeat what they just did, it'll be fine. I don't, though, expect Cloud9 to let it go that way again. I, I don't think so either. And I think we might see the ISIS bans return. They let it through. And they let it through the second phase as well. I mean, it was uh, one of the last picks for Paradigm. And we, we really saw that control that Anister and Cloud9 don't like. Anister likes ganking. Mm -hmm. And we saw him actually, he was the initiator for a lot That's of right. these fights early on, but they weren't able to secure any kills. I mean, they had ISIS protection on the spear, or silent spear ball, so much control, wing gust away, circle yep. protection dropped. They just couldn't secure him. And even even then, they would try and gank Cubo Fred. We saw them try and gank Zalia. There was so much protections that Paradigm players were able to survive for so long. Well, that's why Cloud9 as well have always banned ISIS for the Pro League. Yes. For the Pro League, they consistently banned ISIS majority of the time. They let it through. And EU has fantastic ISIS all over the place as well. Like We're well known for playing ISIS before and Eve. Oh, for sure. Bothered picking it up as well. So surprising that one, as well as you may get him through. I mean, you against an ego against EU. She's the magic I get buffed. We're going to play you mid. That's true. In a role. Doesn't matter Doesn't where. Doesn't even matter. We'll, we'll play him. It'll be mid or it'll be... And if you don't, if you ban him, or soon. we'll take Aries. Or we'll just put below the support. And then, oh God, solo queue's going to be terrible. Oh man. Every, every land everywhere. solo queue's terrible because oh. everyone's like, wow, that god's OP, let's play. And it's either, one, it's truly OP, mm -hmm. and I'm getting wrecked by players who I'm just like, oh, what? you're like bronze, why are you beating me? Yeah, but or I'm like bronze too. Yeah, so. I'm like bronze three now. Yeah, okay, okay, thank you. Or it's like, it's not that good, and only, you know, Cyclone Works Spin and Zalia can play it, and it's just like, Works in situ playing. certain situations. But I mean, overall, the situation for Paradigm there, three tanky frontliners, two gods on the back line that were easy to protect. Isis with self-peel, plenty of it, silence. Yes. Stun with the uh, uh, spirit ball, and then circle of protection for protections and the heal afterwards. And then Freya, obviously, Valkyrie's discretion, take her out of combat if she needs to. Also, still got the banish available if she needs to, to just whoop him in the air. Reposition herself, get herself back to safety. I agree. Good but that, composition. Yeah, I mean, that game went to Paradign very cleanly. I don't even think Barracuda being here or the lane swaps would have mattered. That's that all. composition was disgusting. So now Cloud9, though, they're moving towards game two. They need to refresh. I, I really hope that it wasn't game one, like their morale was down, because if their morale was down in game one, it's going to be down in game two as I well. Think, I don't think the morale was down, but they came in, like, speaking to it beforehand, they came in the outside of, like, well, Barra's not here. We don't have anything to lose. That, yeah, but that's, oh. that's, it, it's, it's not a small, down mindset, but no, it's but not the winner's mindset. It's not a winner's mindset, but at the same time, it's a big, difficult decision when people look at Barracuda as one of the all-stars of Cloud9. Oh, for sure. And the, one of the backbones in terms of carry potential for their team, too. When he's not on the table anymore, and then you're having to switch your solo laner, who's generally a front line for your team, having to switch into the Hunter position, it's a difficult I mean, ask. Omega can't spam Taunt on Hunters, because he'll actually die this that, time. That's also true. And we dived mid lane once and died. Like, if he did that on Hercules, he would have been fine. But yeah, oh yeah. 
I think he forgot what role he was playing. Yeah, for. it's it seemed. I, I think that was a thing too. Uh, we took note of it. I believe eight or nine minutes in, he he Apollo altered into the middle lane. That's right. And this is clearly just unfamiliarity or just being used to being that front line. I think he could, could get away with it. Lower exactly. HP than he he, else. he dove in onto three, got turned on, froze. Mm -hmm. Beads it, but doesn't have the mana that's to right. escape, and in it's just unfortunate. In fairness, the first time round when he dove mid lane, that's when he picked up the first two kills. We saw a big grouping from Cloud9 for the first two kills of the game, got them first blood, and then on top of getting that first blood, they had a good lead. Bought that big gank to the solo lane that they committed so many for, gave Paradigm the gold fury, gold lead, and from there, Paradigm just started to st keep getting experience and gold lead. All right, though, I think we're ready to get into game two picks and bans. Casters are ready, guys. Take it away.